Hello everyone, it's Misha Kaina and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to dive into an essential topic for all nursing students and professionals and that is drug dosage calculation. So we'll begin with the basics of drug dosage calculation and we'll move to um, IV drip flow rates. Let's begin. So what is drug dosage calculation? It is the process of determining the correct amount of medication to administer to a patient. It is crucial to ensure that our patient receives only the right amount of medication for effective treatment and we should avoid underdosing because this may be ineffective and we should also avoid overdosing because this can be harmful and even fatal. Okay, so the first step in learning how to do drug dosage calculations is understanding the basic units of measurements that we have to use such as milligrams, grams, milliliters, liters, and the conversion um, factors for these units of measurement. So I'm going to list down some of the most common um, units that we use and their conversion values. So we have one, first we have one kilogram it's equals to 1,000 grams. One gram is equals to 1,000 milligrams. One milligram is equals to 1,000 microgram. And one kilogram is also equal to 2.2 pounds. Before our volumes, one liter is equal to 1,000 ml. And then one ml is also equals to one cubic centimeter and um, one ounce this is an o it's not a zero it's an o oz for ounce is equals to uh, 30 milliliters one teaspoon is equals to five ml one tablespoon is equals to 15 ml and two tablespoon is equals to one ounce for our time, one hour is equal to 60 minutes, and one minute is equal to 60 seconds. And that's our units of measurements and their conversion values. So let's say I have 5 milligrams. I want this to be expressed in micrograms, so I'm going to write it this way. What goes at the bottom of this line? should have the same unit as this one so that we could cancel it out later so i'm going to write here one milligram is equals to 1000 micrograms i can now cancel this out cancel these units out and five multiplied by 1000 is 5000 divided by one is still 5000 okay so 5,000 and the remaining unit that we have is micrograms. So this is micrograms. So 5 milligrams is equal to 5,000 micrograms. Another one. Um, what about this one? Weight. So what if our, a person weighs 80 kilograms and we want that to be expressed in pounds? So the same method that we did um, earlier, the value that goes below this line should have the same unit as this one so we can cancel it out later so one kilogram is equals to 2.2 pounds cancel cancel 80 times 2.2 is 80, 80 times 2.2 is 176 divided by one and we still have 176 okay so pounds so 80 kilograms is also equals to 176 pounds. What if it's the other way? What if the weight is expressed in pounds like 180 pounds? And we want that in kilograms. So we'll write here 2.2 pounds is equals to 1 kilogram. So 180 times 1 divided by 2.2. So 180 divided by 2.2, 81.8, 81 kilograms, okay? Because this one is cancelled and we only have kilogram as our remaining unit of measurement. So 81.8 kilograms, okay? Very easy. 
So the next step in learning how to do drug dosage calculations is knowing the formula formula that we have to use. So this one is the most common formula that we use, D over S times Q. Okay, so guys, I don't want you to get confused. Sometimes other schools teach their students um, this formula, but they are in different letters. Okay, they just use different letters to represent the variable, okay, the variables for this formula, but essentially they are all the same, okay, they all have the same meaning, they all have the same meaning, they just have different letters, okay, like for example, Q, this one stands for quantity, but for some, um, they use the letter V, okay, for vehicle, but both, they have the same meaning, okay, so D stands for desired dose okay this one stands for desired dose it is the amount of medication that the doctor has prescribed so if your doctor if the doctor tells the nurse to give a patient 50 milligrams of this medication the 50 milligrams is the desired dose okay then s stands for stock on hand stock on hand and this just means um, this is just the concentration of the medication available so it may be in milligrams per tablet or milligrams per ml next we have q this stands for quantity okay so this is the form in which the medication is applied so it could be in a number of tablets or volume of a liquid so for example this picture right here I have a vial of a medication, gentamicin, so pay attention to this one. Okay, so this is the stack on hand and quantity. So this vial, medication vial, contains 2 ml of liquid, and that liquid contains 80 milligrams of gentamicin. So this 80, this one, is our S, and this 2 ml, that's our Q. So let's try to solve some problems so we can better understand the concept. So the doctor orders 250 milligrams of medication and the tablets available are 125 milligrams each. How many tablets should be given? So um, what I'd like to do first is to plot down the important values given in the problem like this because uh, sometimes the person who creates this kinds of questions um wants to be tricky and so sometimes they add in values that are not um, relevant to the situation they're just there to confuse you that's why i like to start my calculations this way okay so our quantity is one tab it's because our medication comes in tablets and for every tab for one tab it contains 125 milligrams of the medication okay so we have our formula d over s times q and i am just going to plot these values into this formula so 250 milligrams over 125 milligrams times one tab cancel out this unit 250 divided by 125 is 2 times 1 is still 2 so we have 2 tabs okay? we have to give the patient 2 tabs in order to achieve this 250 milligram order of the doctor okay next the doctor orders 500 milligrams of medication the medication is available as 100 milligrams per ml so 500 milligrams and 100 milligrams are Q for every 1 ml, there is 100 milligrams. D over S times Q, 500 milligrams. Why am I terrible handwriting? 500 milligrams divided by 100 milligrams times 1 ml. Cancel out this units. 500 divided by 100 is 5 times 1 is still 5. Our our remaining unit is ml so ml goes right here 5 ml we have to administer 5 ml of this medication to the patient next the doctor orders 0 0.5 grams of a medication the vial available contains one gram in 2 ml how many ml should be administered so 
if you're feeling more confident you can just go ahead and plot the values directly one gram times two ml so 0 0.5 grams divided by one is still 0 0.5 and multiplied by two it's one okay one ml we have to give our patient one ml of this medication next the doctor orders a medication at 5 mg per kilogram for a patient weighing 70 kg. The medication is available as 50 mg per ml. How many ml should be administered? So, um, this problem says that for every kilogram of the patient, we have to give uh, 5 mg and the patient weighs 70. So, the first step, we have to multiply 70 by 5 okay, to get our desired dose. 70 times 5 is for 50. So, 50 milligrams is our desired dose. And our stock on hand is 50 milligrams. Our Q is 1 ml. So, the same formula, 350 divided by 50, 50 milligrams times 1 ml. Crush out this units. 350, 350 divided by 50 is 7 times 1 ml is still 7 ml. Okay, that's the, um, that's how many mls of the medication we should administer. Okay, okay so let's proceed now with flow rates. So what is a flow rate? It is the speed at which the IV fluid is being administered to a patient. Again, it is the speed at which the IV fluid is being administered to a patient and it can be expressed in mls per hour okay, ml per hour or it could be in drops per minute drops per minute so the formula for flow rate is very simple okay we have float for this one we have the volume to be infused volume to be infused divided by the time or the hours to run okay how long the doctor orders you to deliver that fluid to a patient okay so let's say you have 500 ml of iv fluid and the doctor wants you to give that to the patient for over five hours five hours so 500 divided by 5 is 100 so that's 100 ml per hour okay that's your flow rate okay so for the drops per minute this one um all you need to have is the drop factor of the iv tubing that you are using so it's usually found in the packaging of your of your infusion set so like this one this is an infusion set it contains the iv tubing that we're going to use to spike your iv fluid bottle and the drop factor for this one is 20 drops per ml this one okay so let's try to solve some problems so we can better understand the concept okay so this one administer 500 ml of p5 water over four hours the iv set has a drip factor of 15 drops per ml what is the drip rate in drops per minute okay so this is the formula that we use to determine the drops per minute volume to be infused over um, hours to run and then times the drop factor drop factor it's gtts per ml and over 60 60 right here is just so we can convert the time in hours to minutes okay okay so let's just input the values that we have from the problem into this formula 500 ml divided by um, 4 hours times the drop factor which is 15, 15 drops per ml and 60 500 divided by 4 equals 125 times 15 equals 1875 divided by 60 that's 31 let's just round it off to 31 because it knows 0.25 in drops so 31 drops per minute 
so in real life if you're using the um, manual IV fluid delivery and you're not using an infusion pump you just have to manually count for 31 drops okay you just have to count for 31 drops in the drip chamber of the IV tubing that you're using okay to ensure that we deliver the correct amount of fluid to the patient so another problem you need to administer 750 ml of IV fluids over five hours using an IV set with a drip factor of 20 drops per ml what would be the drip rate Okay, what would be the drip rate in drops per minute? So the same process volume to be infused um, time in hours times the drop factor and over 60 so we could have it in minutes okay so 70 70 750 ml divided by 5 hours times 20 drops per ml over 60 if that is 750 divided by 5 hours is 150 times 20 divided by 60 is 50 so that's 50 drops per um, per minute okay that's our answer very easy okay so the last one if we what's being asked if what's being asked is the hours to run okay so let's say you're you are to give 750 ml of iv fluid and what um so let's say if you're given 750 ml of fluid and it should run for um a flow rate of 150 um, 150 milliliters per hour okay so the flow rate is 150 ml per hour in order to get the hours to run you just have to divide the volume to be infused and by the flow rate okay so ml per hour so 750 divided by 150 that's five hours five hours okay that's it guys so that's it for today's video guys i hope you find our discussion helpful and if you did please leave a thumbs up and subscribe for more nursing content also hit that bell icon so you get notified when i upload new videos and also leave comments down below and i'll be happy to help thanks for watching happy nursing